Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to day 68 of Autodesk Fusion. Today, what we're going to be doing is taking those cams and we're going to be building them and then assembling them or joining them in our box so far. What I do know is I'm not going to need them at all right now, so I'm going to go ahead and make both of those inactive. So we're going to click on Create a Sketch. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create all four of my cams. And so what I do know is that each cam is going to have a diameter of, uh, in, and sorry, internal diameter of quarter inch. And then for the sake of showing students that what doesn't work and that anything off of a circle cam uh, causes motion. So the first one we talk about is a circle and saying a circles do nothing. But then any deviation from a circle, be it a peak, a valley, or anything like that, uh, does cause motion. So we're going to go ahead and just make a 1.5 inch cam. We're going to go and extrude that out. Uh, let's make a quarter inch as well. And let's make this as a new component. And so we're going to call this component, we're just going to circle cams. Okay. What we're also going to do now is just make that inactive. And we're also going to make the next one. So let's go ahead and make our next cam. So draw a circle for a quarter inch for the inside diameter. And then let's do an eccentric cam. And so you can do parametric modeling for these. But a centric cam is essentially a circle cam. But that center diameter hole is somewhere not in the center of the circle. And so we're going to go ahead and let's just make sure that this isn't too big. So let's make it 1.5 inches as well. Hit finish sketch and let's extrude for this a quarter inch as well. Uh, what I am going to do is I forgot to make that a component though. So create new component from bodies. Click OK. So we're going to call this eccentric cam. All right. Now, depending on if you're going to 3D print these or you're going to have them cut out of a laser engraver or make them from scratch, your materials are going to look different. Um, we, as my students, we're going to 3D print these, hopefully. And so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to right click physical material and we're going to use some plastic and we're going to use PLA if we can find it. No, nope. so let's just use the basic. Let's say ABS plastic and we'll just call that good. So we know both of these are going to be ABS plastic, but then for appearance sake, let's make our, our one of our cams, let's make them blue. So there we go. That way one of my cams looks white, the other one looks blue, and we're going to keep building some more cams. So create a sketch. This next one, we're going to do really easily. We're going to create a hex cam. So under polygon, we're going to do circumscribe polygon. And there you go. Boom. Hex cam is made. We're going to make this a 1.25 hex cam. Yep. That looks all right. We're going to also do our inside diameter of 0 0.25. We're going to extrude this back a quarter inch. Make it a new component. Click OK. And this is going to be hex cam. All right. We'll right click hex cam. We're going to do physical material. ABS plastic should still be up here. So I'm going to click and drag and drop. Now it's made out of ABS plastic. But let's choose a different color. For appearance, let's go with red. So I'm going to find a red that looks nice. That looks good. Cool. All right. We're going to deselect the hex cam. And we're going to make our last one, which is going to be the snail cam. Now, what I'm going to do here is the cheater snail cam. If you're interested, I have a video way early uh, doing snail cams the correct way with that continual growth. So what I'm going to do is do my inside diameter for that. Now, a snail cam 
slowly grows from one end to the other. And so what I'm going to do here is draw two separate lines, each one a half inch in length. That way I got a point right in the middle. And so what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to so we got a half inch and we're growing up to an inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my next line halfway between half an inch and an inch is going to be 0.75. And so what we're going to do then now is I'm going to do a three point arc. So let's do this. Let's do create arc, three point arc. And look where it looks about right. And then we're going to do the last one as well. So we're going to do a three point arc, top, bottom, to where it looks about right. And that looks okay. Like I said, this is just the, the cheater snail cam. It's a real quick way to do it, um, but you can still get the job done. And so what it does is it does still can hopefully still cause that continual growth. So I'm going to extrude these two pieces out to a quarter inch. Click on new component. Click OK. And we have our snail cam. Like I said, this isn't this is not a good snail cam. It's just a snail cam. But I want to show you how to do it quickly, throw it in there, and then we can continue on a merry way. All right. I'm going to right click snail cam, physical material. We're going to do ABS plastic because we're 3D printing these still. And then under appearance, let's do yellow. Now, since this is the appearance, it doesn't really matter what specific uh, color I'm using since the material has already been se selected. Okay, now here's a little bit interesting thing you run into. So on this right side, you see this download symbol. Uh, so these colors aren't automatically downloaded. If you scroll up a little bit, you should be able to find some yellows that are downloaded, or you can download if you really like that particular texture. And, but there we go. I'm good to go with all of my cams. So I'm gonna do is make all these pieces active now and you know, things are lying on top of each other, but that's okay. What we're gonna do then is we can just move these pieces. We can just move them kind of where we want them to be for right now. And we're gonna go ahead and this time I'm going to capture this position because this allows me to start to assemble my cams where I need them to be. All right. Now, let's do joint. We're going to join the center of that circle with the center of my axle. That is going to be rigid constraint again because I want them to rotate with. This is not going to be a revolute. When you're doing the automatos, you only have one revolute. All right, we're going to go ahead and drag this on over until it lined up about where we need it to be. But I want this one to go right here, actually, the hex cam. So it's negative 0 0.55. Now it look lined up. Nope, I'm going to say negative 0 0.5. Click OK, and then we're done. All right, so let's go ahead and do the next ones. J for join, the center of the circle cam with the center of my axle. Right, we're going to go and drag this on down one inch. That looks OK. Click OK and we're done. Now, as you're starting to throw more and more things in your automata, it's going to get cramped. So how do we fix that? We just make the box disappear. We make the cams that we know we've already got in there disappear. And then I just know I'm left with constraining. Actually, I still need my box, don't I? I'm still left with constraining my eccentric cam. So let's go ahead and just slide this on over. Click OK. And then we're looking good. 
And then the last one, but surely not least, will be the snail cam. And then we're looking good here. Click OK. And let's bring the rest of these in. Now, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to constrain a specific angle for each cam. So right now, they're just denoted as the zero degree measure. If you want to go back and fix that, you can find where that joint is at or where that joint is made, and you can right click edit that joint and so for this snail cam right here if I want it to be at a different position uh, compared to the hex cam compared to the circle and the uh, eccentric cam what you can do is then you can go ahead and just edit that degree then when you click OK it will change the initial position of that cam and so what you can do is a couple of ways you can get to that joint depending on how you want to do it you can find it here like you go right click and you can find, I just saw it not too long ago, referencing joints, there it is. All right, it'll show you down in the timeline where that automata, or sorry, where that joint is in your automata. And so there's a couple of ways to find it. However you want to find it, totally fine. What I found to be the most successful is as you are throwing your cams in there, go ahead and do the angle while you're at it if you already know it. Or you can right click, select referencing joints and they'll pop up in the timeline. So I can now edit this hex cam and what it looks like. So if I want it to be flat initially, click OK, and then we're done. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if we've done this correctly, if I were to click on this joint right here, right click, animate model, as my automata spins, my cams do as expected. However, we do run into a little bit of a problem. My snail cam is on backwards. So what we're going to do is we're going to fix that. So I'm going to go to my snail cam, right click, select referencing joints, find that joint in, and what we're going to do is we're going to flip it. And that's all we need to do, folks. You flip the joint over, or sorry, yeah, you flip the joint over and everything works kind of as expected. You will have to adjust where it's at a little bit, but if you flip that axis, it will, and hopefully now, be going the right direction. And there we go. My snail, my snail cam is now going the correct direction. If you go the other direction with it in real life, you'll break your follower rod. All right, guys, that'll be it for this video. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, the next video, we're going to make our follower rods, and then uh, we'll be calling it done as far as making the automata from that top down. All right, guys, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll see you on the next video.